Okay, um, hopefully the sound is recording on this. Um, this what seems to this seems to be a huge jump between Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. You wouldn't have thought so, but uh, using Windows 8.1 and it's really a pain. I don't like it, but um, it's what's coming by new laptops, so I'm having to suffer it. Anyhow, um, this this is a follow-on for my brief setup on how to get um, Oscon working on here. So I've got my Starry Night Planetarium software here. So I'm going to right click and go to run as administrator and this is taking ages to load never did in Windows 7 but I don't know if it's some mistake I've made it used to be quicker but some clash between it and OSCOM has upset it and I really can't be bothered to rebuild my operating system so that's now loading up now that's the starry night and I think you might have seen in a previous video how I coupled this up to Astro Tortier well, this is a simpler one I'm doing now just to show you how to connect them up because a lot of people have been fighting with SynScan, and I have, but uh, this seems to work perfectly well for me. Um, of course, there's disadvantages, because you have to have your laptop out with you each time, and plus you've got that cable plugged in. Um, so if you're going to go that way, maybe you can go for the wireless solution. It's one less cable. Um, but in this case, well, here we are. We're doing our best. Gives us about a metre to play with. So uh, a metre and a bit, probably. I'd say the cable's probably closer to about a metre and a half to two metres. Apologies if I'm wrong there. Um, so you can see it's taking a bit of time to load up. It takes about a minute normally. Um, I'm just talking through a couple of bits and pieces um, as it loads. So um, this is Starry Night College. So anyhow, while that's doing its bits there, we need to find out where the um, the cable's gone. The the uh, which port has been installed into and there's a prolific driver that needs to be installed I'll show you that shortly so if you go to toolbox and uh, this is the SCOM toolbox and click on driver setup you need EQ mod XC selected so go into that and it should pull up there we are so COM port 4 was where it was before and still at COM port 4 that's okay then Otherwise, it, all it, what it does is it automatically finds what COM port that you've plugged your OSCOM into. So it saves you from having to go into the device manager to find out if I'm scratched. So, so, so there we are. So, so that's been selected. It's COM port 4. So we click OK to that. And I'm going to close that down. Um, I have kept it open historically, but I'm not going to this time. It might even be running in the background. No, it's not. It was last time. So I'm just waiting for this to, to load now. Final initialization. I'm going to pause it and I'll be back with you in a second. Welcome back. I didn't have to wait for too much longer. Don't let you just put your just in the product. It's, it's a very good tool, these uh, Starry Night. Um, I get on with it very well. Um, anyhow, so we've got these tabs down here and I'm going to click on the telescope tab at the bottom. And here we are. So we've um, a few options we can configure which basically pulls up the screen there to connect to whichever I mean if you use the POF hub then that's there but as I say that's not working for me I don't know whether that's a fault but you'd want to choose that there EQ mod I've already kind of gone through this so, so if it's your first time and it, and it nags about it it's asking for you to select that and then click on OK and then you might have to go into properties um which it's not doing for for me unless I've just frozen the thing. Yeah, we go. In which case, you just um, configure your bits in here, which I will go through in another course, although it has been done by the people who wrote this. And there's no point in me reinventing the wheel, but uh, very good anyway. But let's just click that off. There we are. And I'm going to click on cancels. I don't do anything here. He says. No, I don't. Okay, what can I switch off in? Oh, yeah. It's being stubborn now. All right, I'll click OK then. Yes, what about that? I really don't want to have to go and restart Starry Night again, but I'm going to probably have to. Right, there we are. So <clears throat> we won't go back there again. So I'm going to connect now. Pardon me. And that brings up the EQ mod thing here. So, this is for moving your telescope around to give you a brief uh, overview. I like to have it down at about four 
to move around objects like the moon. So the lower these are, the faster it goes, basically. But four is about right for me. And you probably might want to use something a bit higher up than that if you're going to be slewing physically from one object to the other. So that is it. This is now connected to here. And you can obviously park and you can set park position here as well. That's something I'll come back to in a bit. But if all you need to do here is just select your object. I mean, that's the Pleiades there. So you can click on it and right click and then go for slew to Pleiades. And you can hear that the mount is loyally responding to that and i hope you're not listening to my boys too much upstairs um should be reasonably muffled you can probably definitely hear the drive though so that's now gone to where it thinks the ladies are it's probably not very far off mind you it's not being panel aligned or anything but anyhow if it's there and then you've gone and got it centered in you're using your um your software and what you want to probably do I've still got my camera collect selected so let's just turn that on and then I'm going to come down and open up uh, EOS Backyard Explorer there we go may as well just demonstrate this one up here as well because it can save you an awful lot of time so that's now firing that up so it thinks it's now pointing at the Pleiades that's Comet Lovejoy down there next to the Comet it's moved up a bit since the previous night that's Orion over there it's Comet Lovejoy there. So that gives away when this was recorded now, doesn't it? Right, so there we are. So that's the Star and I believes that's pointing at the Pleiades right there. That's where the Pleiades are. So as far as this software is concerned, it believes it's done it. But as it, so what we need to do is if we connect that, I thought I had said it to automatically connect, but never mind. And we want to go in the different people that got different methods by clicking to drift the line. And uh, I have to tell you, we are not actually outside. We are in my sitting room. There appears to be some rubbish on my sensor as well. So, oh, well, never mind. But anyhow, that there is your reticle. And what you'd want to do is get the Pleiades in this area here um, as much as possible. Or, you know, get the key stars in this area here to help centre it. I haven't probably chosen the best example there. I mean, if you're looking to align against the star, they need to get the star slap bang into there. And you can align it quite easily using this. In fact, if you really want it to be pedantic, you can click on the um, pad and then set it to, well, it's already set the four in this case, click into it, and you can use your mouse arrows to move whatever objects into there i suggest starting with the star to align um probably haven't started with the best object but with the with the Pleiades, but there you go so you, so you get the star in there and if you've got a nice bright one might as well see if you can um, focus it using a button off mask while you're here as well so that's how we do that we just close that down once that snap bang in the middle of there and then once it's in there we're happy and it's focused make sure it's focused as well if it isn't focused and you're messing with that later you're going to throw your alignment off so, so, so everything you do, um, the, the alignments make sure it's in there and also focus it i mean even yeah you, you probably want to focus it first i think and then get it into that reticle there just so you can see the diffraction grating easy enough and then once we've got that what do we do then we come back here and then we right click and then we go for sync on the Pleiades or sync on all the baron or sync on Betelgeuse so what you've done is you've moved it a little bit further it doesn't matter if you have to take the gears off to, to, to move it to, to get it in properly um, as long as you get it in then you can see it in the um, in the reticle that it is fine so when you've got it spot on in there right click and then go for sync on whichever object in this case to play these and you've now synchronized starry night to go for that object you know, to save you know, to, you've helped it to, to to know where it is in other words and you'll need to do it a couple of times say if you just pick on another star at random it likes you to pick on objects which are quite far apart if you're going to be syncing with them so here's another one eater catfire why not slew there and my mount is going to where it is. Notice I'm not actually sinking because I've already done a reasonably good job of this already. So I'm not going to think it's got it wrong. It isn't polar aligned for one thing. So uh, you need to get your mount polar aligned and level for this as well. If you're, you, you know, that's what they say. But I mean, as long as you've got it reasonably.
level are reasonably polar aligned. You know, I haven't had any real problems. It still works perfectly. So there we go. We all need to Cephi. And I'm going to come back here to my reticle. Well, you'll probably see I haven't gone very far. As the camera sat on the desk and not stuck into a tele into a camera into the telescope somewhere. And then as before, you can flip up your pad and you can use your mouse keys or your, your, your arrow keys to move the object around until you get it into that reticle there, which is a magnification of that there. So you want to get that spot on in there. And when it's spot on in there, that's fantastic stuff. You can then come back and then right click on Eta Cephi and then go for sync on Eta Cephi. Now this is why I've said this so views in SynScan because firstly you can choose whichever star you want to align with. Yeah, whatever you want to align with, go for it. You know, it's, it's on here, you can choose it, you can go for it, fantastic stuff. And it's not a problem. And um, each time you even get an object that you've been working on, then there's no reason why you can't resync just you, you, just to make it work a bit better and make Starry Night um, work in, in, in more harmony with um, ASCOM. And that's it. So you need to do that a couple of times. And you'll notice that each time you do it, it becomes easier and easier. So you probably might want to select another object that's a bit further away this time to give it a nice sort of synchronization or alignment term triangle. Because the idea now is you've synced against three stars that are quite far away. At least I will have after I've gone again. So what this does is it gives you a, a, an area of alignment that you've gone through on different sides of the sky now. So anything in between that, within that area that you want, it's a lot easier to get to. So now you've got EQ mod, now the, the telescope moving towards COCAB. That's where Starry Night believes it is. So there we go. We're hoping by now to be quite reasonably on target. And then once again, we're there. We're already focused and everything, so we don't have to mess with that. We come back into here, and then we do the usual and make sure that we've got COCAB nicely in the center of that reticle. And then when you've done that, come back and then just simply sync on COHAB. And going forward, um, that's pretty much it. Been joined by my little boy now, so I'm going to have to close down. But I think I've got the general gist. And once you've finished, simply park the telescope. And that's now putting it back into park position. And it's so, okay, Daddy's just recording. Does this for a living, mate? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then... Um, that should be it. It shall now be parked. And that is the jobby. And then once you've got it parked and it says parked up on there, which it should do very shortly, there we go. We can disconnect from there. And again, save your, you know, you should, should all, you should have one instance of this running. I mean, it reckons I'm in London, I'm actually in Northampton. So you want to have this set up. So all those settings, so it knows where you yeah. are, and it sets in the correct uh, location, so that you can fire that yeah. up. Thank you, me old mate. So you can fire that up and um, go for I'll the business. I'll fire it up and take a camera. <laughs> that one is. It's a future astronomer, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That note. Thank you very much. This is Scott. Thank you very much.